Hi and welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you how to complete the unit, set up single sign-on for your internal users. The instructions in the unit and the hands-on challenge are one and the same. I'm going to walk you through all of the steps and by the end of this, you're going to be able to earn this badge with confidence. However, this unit says it's supposed to be able to do, it doesn't actually do. I've created a case with the Trailhead team. They know this is an issue. Once I hear back from them, I'll put a link in the description for the updated video for how they explained either what I was doing wrong or what's wrong with the unit. So keep an eye out for that. But don't worry, you will definitely get some confetti and a shiny new badge at the end of this video. Let's get to it. This unit basically includes four steps. You're creating a federation ID for each user, setting up SSO settings in Salesforce, set up Salesforce settings in the SSO provider, and making sure it all works. Now for me, the first time I did this, this unit took me like 45 minutes to work through. If you think about it, this is actually pretty simple, and it took me a long time to get my head around this. We're gonna set up so two systems can talk to each other. We have to say, system one, look for information from system two, and hey, system two, look for information from system one. And once we've set that up, then, they're able to work together. That's pretty much it. In order for the systems to talk to each other, they have to have a common language, and that's the Federation ID, which we'll do right now. Step one, create a Federation ID. From setup, enter users in the quick find box, then select users, users, and then we're gonna go down here to users. Click edit next to Sia's name. If you've been following the instructions in Trello directly, you created a user with his name earlier. It doesn't really matter though, it's any user. Um, I'm going to click edit next to their name to my guest admin at rewild.com and then under single sign on information, enter the Federation ID. Okay. In this case, I'm just going to use the username, which is totally fine. Scroll down, enter that in and then click save. Step one, done. Step two, set up your SS provider in Salesforce. So in a new browser window, go to axiomsso.herocoapp.com and we're gonna click SAML Identity Provider and Tester and we're gonna download the Identity Provider Certificate. Okadox, SAML Identity Provider and Tester, download the Identity Provider Certificate. So far, so easy. Now what do I do? I go back. In your Salesforce org from setup, enter single in the quick find box and select single sign on settings. Okay. You actually don't have to type in single. You could type in sync, which I don't know. It just makes me happy, but that's weird, but whatever. And now we're going to click edit. And we're going to make sure that SAML is enabled, right? Click edit, select SAML enabled. Sorry, I did that out of order, but you with me? We're good. We're good. SAML is enabled, and we're gonna click save. In SAML single sign-on settings, say that 10 times fast, click new. And now we're gonna enter in the following values. Name, Axiom, test app, da -da. issuer, Axiom, SSO.heroku app. It's funny that's just an HTTP. I don't know why that's the case, but it is. Identity provider certificate. Choose the file you downloaded. Where is it? It's in my downloads. <laughs> I've already downloaded it. Request signature method. RSA SHA1. A uh, SAML identity type assertion contains the Federation ID from the user object. That's this radio button. SAML identity location select identity is the name identifier. You got to read those together because there's no space between them. It's camel case. You just got a name identifier. Element of the subject statement. Oh, that was already selected. That was anticlimactic. And then service provider initiated request binding, select HTTP redirect. Okay, I could do that. And now enter 
in your domain URL, which is displayed on your org's My Domain Setup page. Make sure that your entity includes HTTPS and references the Salesforce domain. Okie dokes. So I need to go there. Well, I don't want to lose this page um, to find my sign in page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to open up setup again and go to my domain. One thing you don't want to do here is you don't want to sign out to find out what your login page is. Because if you sign out, you'll lose the progress that you've already done on this page. And then you'd have to do it again. And that'd be frustrating. So don't do it that way. Go to my domain. And now you have your current my domain URL. And if you're asking me, boy, Jeff, that's a good idea. How did you come across that one? I did it. Yeah, I did. HTTPS, enter that in. We're good. Now, it should look something like this. And it, it does look something like that. So we're good. We're going to click Save. So at this point, we've told Salesforce, hey, look for information from Axiom SSO thing. Go look over there. And now, step three, link your identity provider to Salesforce. So we're going to return to the Axiom web app. We're going to click SAML Identity Provider and Tester and generate a SAML response, which is right here. And now we're going to enter the following values. Leave the other fields as is. SAML version 2.0. OK. If you hear my kid at home, she was sick yesterday. Thank God she's feeling fine now. But there's a happy kid in the background, which is sort of a cool background. Backdrop, username or federation, federated ID, the federation ID from the CS Salesforce user page. Well, we could get that by going over to um, here. Let's do this. I'm going to leave this page open because I need to, but then I'm going to go back to users. And I'm going to click here. Right there it is. There's your federation ID. Or the guest admins. Um, and put that in here. The issuer is Axiom SSO. And the recipient URL that's the URL from the Salesforce SAML Sing-On Settings page. Here it is. And we're looking for the URL from the Salesforce SAML Sing-On Single blah, 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 Single Sign-On Settings page. It is in the endpoints labeled login URL. So we are going to go down over here to where it says login URL, and we are going to select this fella. Got it. Go back over here, and that's going to be our recipient URL. With me? It's good. Now, we're going to enter in the entity ID. And that's the entity ID from the Salesforce SAML Sing On Settings page. Say that 10 times fast again. So, here it is. Got it. And that's going to go right in here. And the SEO SSO start page, we don't have to change that. And when you're finished, the Axiom settings page should look something like this. And it looks something like that. OK, we've set the two systems up. They now should be talking to each other. Now all we have to do is make sure it all works. So step four, make sure it all works. In the Axiom settings below, click Request SAML Response. It's way down at the bottom. Not so far down. It's down at the bottom. OK. 
Axiom generates the XAML assertion in XML. Does it look like a language used by a robot? Yeah, it does. Okay, we're gonna go through all of that and now we're just gonna click login. Boom. We should be able to look over here and I logged in. Now, if everything is okay, you're logged in as the user that we created it for at your Salesforce homepage. Now, you'll notice I'm not. <laughs> I'm signed in as me, not as that user that we just said we were gonna create. And that's the issue. I'll get to this in a second, but let's get some confetti first. So, we got the confetti, but there's a problem. And the problem is, is that it doesn't actually work. If I come over here and log out, but now if I try to log in, it should log me in as SIA, and I, it doesn't work. Now, you might be saying, hey, Jeff, I don't care. I got the confetti. I got a shiny new badge on my profile. Life is good. And in some ways that's true. Like, that's okay. But if you actually ever did want to configure inbound SSO for a domain, something's wrong here. Once I get a response from the Trailhead team as to how to actually solve this, I will add it to the description below. And um, so, you know, check back if you're really interested. And uh, otherwise, hey, you're now finished with all of the prerequisites for this super badge. Way to go, hooray you. And the next video I'm gonna make is on the super badge, on how to prepare to do the super badge. Not on how to do it because God forbid, I'm not gonna give that away, but I will show you exactly how to create user stories and grab all of the requirements and make it really simple. And hopefully these will be some great skills for you to use into the future. So if you wanna be sure to see that video, please subscribe, click the little notification thing so you find out when it comes out. And um, yeah, excited to be part of your journey in learning Salesforce. Thanks for watching.